So I stand before you today, Mr. President, and my colleagues to say this will be my last term as Republican leader of the Senate. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. However, I'll complete my job my colleagues have given me until we select a new leader in November and they take the helm next January. Now, people were surprised by it, but it's going to be, it's all going to work out. We're going to end up with a great leader. particularly difficult time for my family. We tragically lost Elaine's younger sister, Angela, just a few weeks ago. When you lose a loved one, particularly at a young age, there's a certain introspection that accompanies the grieving process. Perhaps it is God's way of reminding you of your own life's journey to reprioritize the impact of the world that we will all inevitably leave behind. I turned 82 last week, <clears throat> the end of my contributions are closer than I'd prefer. My career in the United States Senate began amidst the Reagan Revolution. The truth is, when I got here, I was just happy if anybody remembered my name. President Reagan called me Mitch O'Donnell. Close enough, I thought. My, life, my wife Elaine and I got married on President Reagan's birthday, February 6th. It's probably not the most romantic thing to admit, but Reagan meant a lot to both of us. For 31 years, Elaine has been the love of my life, and I'm eternally grateful to have her by my side. I think back to my first days in the Senate with deep appreciation for the time that helped shape my view of the world. I'm unconflicted about the good within our country and the irreplaceable role we play as the leader of the free world. It's why I worked so hard to get the national security package passed earlier this month. Believe me, I know the politics within my party at this particular moment in time. I have many faults. Misunderstanding politics is not one of them. That said, I believe more strongly than ever that America's global leadership is essential to preserving the shining city on a hill that Ronald Reagan discussed. As long as I'm drawing breath on this earth, I will defend American exceptionalism. So as I've been thinking about when I would deliver some news to the Senate. I always imagined a moment when I had total clarity and peace about the sunset of my work. A moment when I'm certain I have helped preserve the ideals I so strongly believe. That day arrived today. My goals when I was narrowly elected to the Senate back in 1984 were fairly modest. Do a good job for the people of Kentucky and convince them that by doing so, they might rehire me for a second term. That was it. That was the plan. If you would have told me 40 years later that I would stand before you as the longest serving Senate leader in American history, Frankly, I would have thought you'd lost your mind. I have the honor of representing Kentucky in the Senate 
longer than anyone else in our state's history. I just never could have imagined, never could have imagined that happening. When I arrived here in 1984 at 42, I'm filled with heartfelt gratitude and humility for the opportunity. But now it's 2024. I'm now 82. As Ecclesiastes tells us, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. To serve Kentucky in the Senate has been the honor of my life. To lead my Republican colleagues has been the highest privilege. But one of life's most underappreciated talents is to know when it's time to move on to life's next chapter. So I stand before you today, Mr. President, and my colleagues to say this will be my last term as Republican leader of the Senate. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. However, I'll complete my job my colleagues have given me until we select a new leader in November and they take the helm next January. I'll finish the job the people of Kentucky hired me to do as well, albeit from a different seat. And I'm actually looking forward to that. So time rolls on. There'll be a new custodian of this great institution next year. I won't surprise you to know I intend to turn this job over to a Republican majority leader. I have full confidence in my conference to choose my replacement and lead our country forward. Well, I hear he's going to be uh, not going to be leader, and he's taken that step. And uh, a lot of people are calling me to to politic for that particular job. Would you like to be the leader? I think I might have. I might I'd, have to choose this guy. I'd rather be governor of Texas. I think you're doing well. I want to keep you in Texas. No, it's uh, people were surprised by it, but it's going to be. It's all going to work out. We're going to end up with a great leader. Well, I can't say that. Uh, a lot of good choices, but I can't say that. Thank you very much. Everybody.